Hi, and welcome to a SonicWall Firewall video tutorial. My name is Micah Vorst. Today we'll set up a site-to-site -site VPN to connect one of our branch offices back to the corporate network. Before we begin configuring the firewalls, we need to have the public IP addresses and local networks that will be used to access across the VPN. In our example, we have Site A and B. We'll bring that up now. The first tab is Site A. The second tab is Site B. Site A has a public IP of 10.61.134.113 and a local network that we want the branch office to access of 192.168.168. That's a slash 24. Over on Site B's firewall, we have the public IP address of 10.61.134.105 and we'll allow Site A access to the X3 interface network, or 192.168.169.0/24. Key difference here is that these networks do not live on each other's firewalls already. So the 192.168.168 network does not live anywhere behind Site B, and vice versa. It's important to know that so that we don't have routing conflicts when we start to set things up. In this demo, I'll use an NSA 6650 and NSA 4650 on SonicOS 6.5 firmware. Before proceeding, now would be a good time to export a settings file and store it in a safe location for both firewalls. Let's navigate over to Manage, Firmware and Backups, We'll click Import Export Configuration, and then Export Configuration. We'll export this settings file, save it, and then also do that for the firewall at Site B. I'll start on Site A, which is an NSA 6650. We'll navigate first to VPN and Base Settings. If the VPN is not already enabled, we'll need to enable it by clicking the checkbox and then selecting Accept. Once we've enabled the VPN, we are now able to add a VPN policy. Let's go ahead and click on Add. We have a few options to choose from when it comes to policy type and authentication method. Today we'll use the policy type Site to Site and authentication method Ike using pre-shared key. Give it a friendly name and then we'll give it some details. So we'll just say VPN to branch. I have some notepad information here. Since we're currently on Site A, we need information to reach Site B. We'll copy that public IP address and continue on. We need some information here for the authentication piece. We're going to go ahead and give it a super secret password. For our local Ike ID and peer Ike ID, I'm going to go ahead and use the firewall identifier. The firewall identifier can be accessed on the VPN base settings page. By default, it's the serial number. We'll go ahead and use this information and plug it into our policy. So for local ID, this is referring to site A, since we're currently on site A, we'll copy that and then we'll head over and grab site B's identifier. Great. Let's hit the Next or Network tab. Under the Local Networks, we're going to give it the 192.168.168.0/24 network. Now, by default, this is the X0 subnet, so I'll be able to do that right here by choosing that default X0 subnet. All right, we have X0. Next, we'll choose the remote networks. I'm going to use the Choose Destination Network from a list, and we'll create a new address object. Go ahead and do that now. Give it a friendly name. Turn it into the VPN zone, and then we're going to create a network. 192.168.169.0.24. Dot zero. All right, we're going to go ahead and hit OK. 
And next, we'll head over to the Proposals tab. For the most part, we're going to leave most of this the same. There will be a few things that we need to change based on your organization's security concerns and recommendations you'll probably want to use something different than what I'm using today. We'll leave Ike v2 mode alone. For our groups we're going to go ahead and change that to 5, give it the old AES 256 and then SHA 256. We'll leave the lifetime 28,800 alone. Head over to our phase 2, change the Encryption type to AES-256, authentication to 256 again. And we're going to go ahead and enable perfect forward secrecy with group 5 and a lifetime of 28,800. You'll want to click the Advanced tab here. Now we're still on Site A, which is the main office. This is some custom administration settings that you'll be able to figure out what works best in your environment. You'll be able to access management over the VPN for the firewalls by enabling or disabling, as well as creating access rules, NetBIOS features, as well as multicast. We're going to leave all this alone for now, but when we go to Site B, we're going to enable Keep Alives. What Keep Alives do is that when tr there is no traffic going across the VPN tunnel, it will keep the VPN tunnel up regardless. Now, you don't want to, it, for example, if, if you have a hub and you have 20, 30, 50 different VPN tunnels going, you don't want your hub to have Keep Alive's turned on. That creates an excessive amount of CPU overhead. So at each branch site that is theoretically doing a little less work, you'll enable Keep Alive's there. That will keep the CPU chugging along on the hub side, being able to process rules, packets, policies, and so forth. All right, we have our policy set up on site A. Let's go ahead and click OK. All right, next we're going to head over to site B and do the same thing. Now, it's going to be very similar to what we've already done, except in reverse. So, for example, the gateway will be Site A's gateway. The local Ike ID will be Site B's ID. And the peer Ike ID will be Site A's ID. And the only thing that's really different from Site A and Site B is that Site B, which is the branch office, has Keep Alive's turned on. We'll go ahead and click OK and see if the tunnel comes up. Great. Looks like we got the up indicator, little green skittle or LED. And then under the active VPN tunnels, we'll see the tunnel that we just created. Sees our local network as well as our remote network with the specific gateway of site A in this case. So let's go back to site A. Looks like it has negotiated the same just in reverse, so the remote is 169 with the gateway ending in 105. Great, so one way to test this is being able to use ping either on the firewalls or on a client machine that is behind one of these networks trying to get to the other network. So for example, our PC that we're on now is behind site A, so we can try to ping site B's interface. So ping 192.168.169.168. Excellent. We see that we can ping and reach the other side of the VPN tunnel. Once the VPN is up and running, I recommend to save another settings file so that you have a last known good configuration. I hope this tutorial was helpful. To learn more about configuring SonicWall products, visit www.sonicwall.com support.